Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to So That Just Happened, a podcast for those who have lost their person and want to find themselves. I'm Carly Cooper, a single mom, widow, coach, author, and chronic truth seeker. My superpower is finding the funny, the hope, and the silver lining in any shit situation. This podcast is for the purpose of education only and is not a replacement for therapy. If you need additional support, please seek out a trained professional for help with your specific situation. Let's get to it, shall we? Okay, we are live and in color, but not really live because this is pre-recorded. Hi, Jamie. I've got my Good friend, one of my besties on with me today, Jamie Diamond. And hi, thanks for doing this on a Sunday. And I apologize for the low tone of my voice. I sound a little B. Arthur-ish, but I've had back-to-back late nights, which for me is not recommended, but couldn't avoid it. And so I'm going to do my best today to keep it together and, you know, give people what they want to hear, what I think they want to hear. And hi. Hi. Yeah, so, I am consuming my caffeine. So I apologize for any B. Arthur esque tone I may. No, hey, we are, we can represent all the Golden Girls. Um, so Jamie and I, just to give you a little backstory, Jamie and I met. I don't even know how many years ago. It feels like a lifetime in a good way. Um, Mm -hmm. But we met doing a show that we do. And um, I think we bonded initially over essential oils because I smelled like them and used them. And I think you were intrigued by that and probably not repelled. And um, and the same. What? We kept dressing the same and people called us out on it. Yeah. And many people think we are twinsies and, you know, I guess we do kind of look similar and act similar and dress similarly, but whatever. Um, And, and then I remember we took it outside of the theater and we went for like a coffee, which I don't drink, but I just watched you drink it. And we talked And that's where I think we really solidified the love and the bond. And we talked kind of like we went like all things woo and it felt safe for both of Mm -hmm. us. And we were like, okay, this is a sisterhood we could get behind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All things woo. I love that. All things woo. We went deep very early Mm -hmm. and we got into the weeds and yeah. And it's been a deep, deep love ever since. So Mm -hmm. at least for me, I don't know how you feel, but. I feel really, you know, in love with you. Um, this is all one-sided the entire I've, time. I, I sometimes feel that. Um, <laughs> but today I want to talk about, like, unfortunately, we're sort of bonded by another sad kind of club. Different, but same, same. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, everybody knows that the reason why I'm doing this mm-hmm. podcast is part of my healing and sharing and trying to help others who, you know, are going through grief and healing because of the loss of their person. So for me, that was my husband. Um, Mm -hmm. But for you, uh, you have lost your your dad and your Nana, who was very, very close with you. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to, if you're cool with it, which that's why you're here, let's face it. There's no no backing up now. (laughs) You've committed Um, to just talk about the loss of your dad and your Nana and the impact and your grieving process and all that. So why don't we just start with how you were affected by the loss of your dad and your Nana and really just explain the relationship you had with both of them. Okay. Well, the loss of my Nana was first um, by, I feel like many years actually, but Um, the loss of my Nana was my first loss. Um, Mm. So it was a big one in on so many levels, because not only was my Nana, um, who was my mother's mother, um, not only was my Nana, my just, she was my, a big part of my world, I shouldn't say she was my world, but she was a huge part of my world. Um, 
she was sort of like my, like my soul, like she filled my soul in so many ways. And um, so for her to have been my first loss just hit really, really hard. How old um, were you? How old were you? I was, I believe I was, I think I was 21 turning. Oh, it was about a week shy of my 22nd birthday, I believe. Okay. Um, 22nd birthday or 23rd, one of the two. It's really far back. At I'm not going to fact check that. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, no, it was because it was, um, it was the year that I was finishing up university and um, she she had been sick for a while, then got better and then got sick again. And so it was a, a, a lengthy process, I guess. Um, but it was a really, it was a rough one. It was a really rough loss. And I was actually in the midst of a show run because I was in theater school for university and I was in the middle. We had a, a week run, but with like a three day break in between the shows. So you had like three shows, three day break, three more shows. Mm -hmm. And then she passed away in the three day break. And um, I ended up going back to finish my run of my shows, which was a very hard decision to make. And sometimes to this day, I regret it because I didn't get to really like grieve at the Shiva with my family like I would have liked to. But I also know that she would have like kicked my butt if she knew that I wasn't going and were she you would've... able to be present and like, like be able to give decent performances? Cause I would imagine that would like take you out. Like, yeah, it, it was, I think it was really super exhausting. I remember crashing hard after, Yeah. Um, but I also felt like it took me a lot longer. Like I did a lot of grieving on my own because I wasn't with my family for a huge chunk of that week. Um, and I remember at the time feeling a lot of regret over it, but I, I know that I couldn't have done it any other way, Yeah. Um, but it was, it was rough losing my Nana was a really hard one. And to this day, like I have moments where I just want to pick up the phone and call her. Mm -hmm. I smell her. I like, I just, I, I know that she's around. Um, and I just got full body chills by the way. Yeah. Really? When you said that. Yeah. 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 Um, Mm -hmm. she's, she's fully around. I, I know that she is for sure. Um, but the loss of her was very different to the loss of my dad. Um, the relationship itself was different, obviously, but, Mm -hmm. um, my dad, I was older. I was married. I had two kids, um, who were two and a half at the time, but he had, uh, he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's in my early to mid twenties. Um, and in his forties, he was wow. diagnosed with, or like his late forties diagnosed with Parkinson's, which eventually as many people know is a progressive disease. It's, um, degenerative. It doesn't get better. It just mm-hmm. can get worse. Um, and then he progressively got worse over the years. And after I got married, we found out that it wasn't Parkinson's was just a symptom of this much greater beast, um, which, which was very hard on my brother and I, because neither of us lived in Montreal anymore. And so he was essentially by himself. He wasn't with my stepmother any longer. He wasn't in a relationship. He was alone. Mm. Um, And his parents were both gone at that time. And um, he ended up in the hospital like a few months after my wedding and never really left um, Mm -hmm. and ended up going into a long-term care facility um, where my mom, his ex-wife, ended up being his strongest advocate. And God bless her for it Mm because- You know, when I said to her, like, how are you doing this? Like, you know, it's like, well, he's the father of my children. My children aren't there to help him. So I'm here. And that was amazing. But he, you, in a disease like that, you lose the person before the person actually departs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's a, a slow grieving process. Like I started grieving the loss of my dad years before he actually passed away because Mm -hmm have a two-way conversation at a certain point, you know, he. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because I've often had the thought, um, what would be an easier 
thing on the family. Not easy by any stretch, but no, like, so our situations are different because your loss of the, of your dad was mm -hmm. like you said, you grieved him long before he actually physically departed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that gave you time. It gave you time to say goodbye or say your things or, or wrap your head around it. For me, mm -hmm. it was like incredibly sudden or for mm -hmm. people who experience loss of somebody who like they're fine. And then they like drop dead from a heart attack out of nowhere. And there's like zero time to prepare. Mm -hmm. And I've often wondered like, what's easier? And I don't think there is an easier. I think that there's, and again, for lack of a better way of stating this pros and cons mm -hmm. to both. Yeah. And yeah. so was the loss of your Nana like sudden or did you have time to process that too? Well, she was definitely like, she had cancer that had like returned. Um, mm -hmm. and she went into the hospital. I don't even remember what it was that ended up putting her in there for the final two weeks of her life. I can't remember what prompted it, but, um, she was there for two weeks before she passed away. And mm -hmm. those two weeks, I think we, I think we all knew, like, I, I don't remember feeling like, like, oh, well, there's a chance that like, she'll get better. Like, right. I kind of, I think I had a feeling that this was it. But I think there was a part of me that was like, well, no, she like got better the first time. So maybe right. like, who knows? It's um, like a dance between like acceptance and denial. Yeah. And so all I did was like, I just remember being a bit of a disaster. We were in like final rehearsals for my show. Um, we then like the first couple of days of my show, some of the family was at the hospital with her. So not everyone could come. Um, and then I was going basically school all day, hospital at night, hospital for dinner, being with the family, going to school the next day, going to the hospital on my breaks, just mm -hmm. spending every possible moment that I could there. That's when I read the entire Harry Potter series. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, why it was, it was written. It was just written for you. It was for, yes, but it was, <laughs> for that. I had been sort of like against it for so long. And then I was like, this is such a good escape. And I was just in the hospital reading book after book after book. Mm -hmm. But I think it was, it was really hard because I was, I was there when she took her last breath. I mean, I was there when my dad did too, but I was there when she took her last breath. I was there, like we were all together. I'd written her, I, I knew I wanted to speak at her funeral. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, some may say that this is a little bit like bad juju, but I wrote my eulogy before she actually passed away mm -hmm. because I knew I wouldn't be able to I knew I wouldn't be able to do it or even form proper chronology, yeah. my relationship with her. Like I just, so while she was in the hospital, I was just like writing down memories. I was talking with my family and it just felt more right. Yeah. I wrote it more as like a tribute to her mm -hmm. rather than thinking of it as a eulogy. Yeah. Um, and then I just read it at the I funeral. think that sounds very smart and practical. And again, it's not like, you know, you were out for lunch with her and she was totally healthy and you were writing this thing. Like, I I, no. I think that's part of the acceptance piece of like, okay, yeah. there was that part of you that intuitively knew that this was imminent and, and mm -hmm. happening. And so mm -hmm. while you had your wits about you and your, you were able to form a thought, that's when you, I think yeah. that's great. So let me, so do you think that the loss of your Nana prepared you better for the loss of your dad, like to handle it? I know it was different and different stages and different relationships or whatever, but yeah. I find that sometimes experiencing the great loss, like the real one that impacts you and every loss is sad, but certain yeah. ones are circle of life and certain ones are just sort of like, you don't, you're not as close. And so, you know, do you think that, that, and not to disrespect your dad in any way or, no. or the relationship you had, but do you think that that prepared you to 
show up differently or more prepared. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to it say. Was, it was, yeah, I do. I, I miraculously know what you're trying to say. Um, <laughs> That's why we connect because I can't form <laughs> sentences and you just know what I mean. I so. kind of... I like to watch you try and figure it out a little bit. Yeah, you, you do appreciate my struggle and <laughs> and you do let me go on about it when you probably knew what I was trying to say about five minutes ago. So I appreciate you for that. I love it. I love it. It's like like the like eager, eager, the, like the hamster, like yeah, yeah. You real. just you just sit and observe yeah. <laughs> as I sweat. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's all good. But no, it's it's actually really I've actually thought about that a lot because you talk about like when when people pass away, especially if they struggled in any way, there is a, and you and I have talked about this. Um, there's a, a little part, sometimes depending on who and the struggle, there's more of a relief than in other situations for my Nana. I didn't feel the only relief I felt was that I knew that in the last couple of weeks she was in pain. She was, mm-hmm you know, and that drove her crazy. Like she was such a lady and always needed to look just right. And, you know, manicured and hair done and the whole thing. And, um, uh, and so I know for her, I was just relieved that she wasn't in pain, but Mm. I felt no relief. Like I felt no, like, Oh, thank God that's over. Right. You know, it was just, it was just pure, like 100% me in like turmoil emotionally Mm -hmm. and not knowing how not knowing what life going forward without her would be like Mm -hmm. Um, but with my dad there were so many times that my brother and I would talk about like like I just I I want this to be over not and sometimes it's selfishly because it's it was hard for me to not be able to show up for him. Like I, I wasn't in Montreal. Mm -hmm. I could only do so much, you know, I could, I went into Montreal to visit. I spent time at the hospital. I brought him things. I took him out for walks in his wheelchair when I was there. I did whatever I could, Mm -hmm. but I was also a mom of twin boys. Like Mm -hmm. they, my dad passed away when they were two and a half. Yeah. So the last couple of years of his life, holy moly it was like a whirlwind yeah and I only do so much um I often found myself saying like this is not like my dad would hate this Mm -hmm. like he was athletic he was healthy he he worked out vigilantly vigilantly diligently diligently (laughs) vigilantly (laughs) diligently I'm going to just sit back and observe your struggle right now. And I'm not going to correct you. No, no. Keep, keep, keep working it out. I don't know. Okay. Um, He worked. Why don't we just say he worked out a lot. He worked out a lot. (laughs) He cared about his health and about eating right. Um, And for him, like, I remember when his body started, like, I guess, atrophying, like with the person. He would, he couldn't go for his daily jogs anymore. He could go for what he called a jock, which Mm -hmm. was like jogging, walking, but he couldn't do what he used to do. And I just remember saying like, this is the worst possible situation for a man like him Mm -hmm. who prided himself on his health and taking care of himself. I was like, if my dad can deplete like this after taking such amazing care of himself and, and taking pride in his health and his body, like, like what is going to happen to me? You know? So (laughs) I just didn't understand. I just, I was like, he took care of himself. How does this happen? Yeah. So I felt so much, obviously sadness for my dad and for me losing my dad. Um, but I felt relief because it was no. Well, he was wasn't your dad any at that point. Like he no. wasn't, he was just, he had zero quality of life. Yeah. And like you said, it would be so awful for him to, it's just, it's, yeah, it's a terrible way for anybody to go yeah. and to suffer. And so I totally get that. Um, yeah. So 
you said, you mentioned that you did, you grieved alone, like on your own yeah, uh, with, with sort of. your, with your Nana just at that time and whatever. So what did that look like? Or what has the grieving process for both or one or the other? What does that looked like for you over the years or even just initially? Um, <clears throat> well, for my Nana, it was, I, I'm the kind of person that like, I kind of pour myself into like looking at pictures, um, you know, watching home movies, like things that I know are going to make me sad, mm -hmm. but it's like this feeling of like, I, I want to just like envelop myself in her and just, mm -hmm. you know, I remember my, my grandfather, um, when we were going through my Nana's things and we would show up for my grandfather and help him, you know, go through her stuff. Um, and he had her bottle of perfume and I asked for it because I loved the way she smelled. She didn't have, she didn't wear like an old lady perfume. She wore like angel by Terry Mugler or whatever his name is, but she wore angel and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So he gave me her bottle of perfume and I wore it after that, like for years mm -hmm. and it just made me, I look for ways to feel closer and connected to who I have lost. So whatever yeah. that means in any given moment, I have a lot of her things. I have jewelry that she gave me like before she passed away. That was hers. Like just, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know if that sounds like, I don't, it almost comes across as like the material items mean a lot to me. But no, it's it's, not it's the connection. It's yes, the connection. It's, it's not like materialistic in a sense that like, like it's just the items. It's more just this feeling of like, this was hers. It's now mine. We're connected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, little things like that. But I, I feel with my Nana, it was a lot of, um, a lot of just looking at pictures of her and, going to restaurants that I would eat at with her or, you know, just doing whatever I doing, whatever I needed to do in the moment, listening to songs that would like make me ball in the car. Yeah. It's like that pleasure pain. It's like, you, you yeah. know, it's like, it's like, you, you know, that it's going to destroy you, but at the same time, it's going to be super healing too. Like, like when you're in it or after. Right. Yeah. yeah. I have an old voicemail of hers that she had left on my answering machine. Um, and it was one of the last times that she and I went out shopping together. She was a big, she was a big reason that I am the shopaholic that I am today. Um, she, it's much all to friends. your husband's chagrin. Yes, yes, much <laughs> to everyone. Um, That's the separate accounts. Thanks, Nana. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Nana. Um, no, she, she, the last time she was, she was already sick. She couldn't drive anymore. She asked me to come pick her up. We went to the mall together. She like bought me a nice sweater. We had lunch and then I dropped her off at home. And by the time I got home from dropping her off, she had left me a message saying all the things, like all the things that she would say to me, like she used to call me Jamal and mm. all these little things. So it's like, hi, Jamal. I had such a good time and all everything with like the love you at the end. I hope we get to do it again soon. And I saved it. It was like maybe like a year before she passed away. I wow. saved it every week. I saved it. I saved it. I saved it. And then after she passed away, I found a way to put it on a cassette tape. Uh-huh. Which you can't play anymore. Have you now no. moved it? No, I, no, I want to, I need to, but I have, a. I bought a special little like thing online oh. that I purposely for that tape. And, um, I just once in a while will like listen to her voice and it makes me cry, mm -hmm. but it just, it makes my heart swell. So, and I wanted my kids to hear her voice. So I love that. I would feel better though, if you found a way to turn it digital. <laughs> so would I. Yeah. That's put that on the to-do list. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's a pending task. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay. So how has their loss impacted your life negatively and or positively, like how have you changed because of it? Them, the, the losses. <laughs> you know what I mean. 
Eli, I'll be here if you need me. <laughs> Vigilant? Vigilant? No, you be vigilant. Vigilant. I am right. going to write that down and put it on a plaque for you because that was amazing. Good. I'm glad. Whatever mm -hmm. I do, you know, make you smile. Um, <laughs> how did it make me, how did it change who I am or how did it like form who I am? Um, uh, you're asking yeah. me to remember the question. Can you repeat the question, please? No. What is the root like of origin? <laughs> how do you spell it? Um, it? No, it was, uh, how has their loss impacted your life, either in a negative or positive way? Or both? Okay. I think, um, I, that's, I mean, okay. That was my sound effect for the day. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay. The loss of my Nana, I think... Um, it changed the way I look at my relationship with my mom, I think. Um, and also how, how I want to like, when my mom leaves us eventually, she's very healthy, not good, but mm -hmm. when that happens, I don't, I don't want there to be like, oh, I wish I'd asked my mom more of these questions. Oh, mm -hmm. I wish I knew more about this, you know? And um, I know that my mom had her own issues with my Nana um, and I honor those. And I know that like granddaughter, grandmother relationship is very different from daughter, mother relationship. And so I, I want my children to have what I had with my Nana. Mm -hmm. um, so when my mom wants to get them stuff. I don't stand in her way because I know that it was my Nana's pleasure yeah. to be able to do things for my brother and I, even though my mom would say you're spoiling them and stop and you don't need to bring them something every time you visit. And, yeah. you know, it was something that truly gave her pleasure. And also, even though at the time it was very much like I was young, I was like in my, in my younger years and my teens, my relationship with her, like, I loved her dearly, but I also knew like, if I called her and said, can we go to the mall? I knew I would get something. I knew that, you know what I mean? But of course, but, but there was also in that it was, that was sort of like the surface of my relationship with her, but there was just like, I just had this trust with her. And I just had this way of like, I knew I could tell her stuff when I was scared to tell my mom something. I knew that like, there was just all the, sh the time shopping with her, mm -hmm. that was relationship building. Of course. You know of what course. I mean? So I just, I think I want to, to honor my time with my mother. I want my children to have that feeling of like, oh, let's go call Nana and she'll take us out or let's sleep at Nana's house. And I want them to have that. And so it really, that relationship showed me what I want with my own mom and what I want my children to have with their grandparents. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, I also, I also, the, the, my relationship with my, okay, wait, hold on. Right, right, right. Rewind. Um, mm -hmm. how it impacted me negatively, I think is that, um, it made me very fearful of being sick. Yeah. Which I think I, I always had been that kind of like hypochondriac kind of worry work, but that made me very fearful um, just of that kind of illness. And I think it also. It your nanas or your dad's or both? My, sorry, my nanas. Okay. My nan um, well, my dad's is a totally different, yeah. you know, worry, yeah. but um, for my nana, it was more like there was a void that truly like 100% has never been filled. I yeah. miss her all the time. I, I think about her. I think about how she would have loved my husband and she would have loved to like tease him and razz him. And yeah. I love the, I just, I long for the relationship that I would have continued to build as I turned into the person that I am today. Yeah. And so I, it's almost like I sometimes think like, why do I waste my, my mental energy wishing for something and longing for something that I know I cannot have, mm -hmm. but I can't help, but just think about like, she would have like 
obsessed over my children. She would have, I, I just wish I could have seen the great grandmother that she would have been, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, because she was the best Nana. So why wouldn't she have been the best great Nana, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, with my dad, um, he, the loss of him again, in just in watching him deplete and, and, you know, my brother and I would often say like on my mom's side, we have cancer on my dad's side, we have like neurodegenerative disorders. And we would like jokingly be like, Hmm, like if you had to spin the wheel, which one <laughs> would you want it to land on? Right. And I am with the type of person that I am with all of like my anxieties and things that I, you know, carry in terms of just mental health stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the thought of going through what my dad went through is absolutely terrifying to me mm -hmm. um, because you get a, you get a diagnosis like that and you know, you're not getting better. Right. You don't it's go, an, you have to accept the demise. Right. And yeah. so I think with that, like watching that was very scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and I tried to sort of like make light of it with my dad, like when he'd have some sort of like delusion or, or hallucination or something. And he would say something to me and I would laugh at him and like make fun with him. And then he'd laugh at himself, you know, humor sort of got my dad and I through a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but I think it impacted me negatively in the sense that like, I, I feel, I remember saying to myself after he passed away, like I, I saw Dave, my husband, when he came into the funeral home and I just was like, I don't have a dad. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I like, I was like daddy's little girl. Like I, I don't have a father, the mm -hmm. feeling of not having a parent. Yeah. Was like that feels so wrong. Mm -hmm. Like half of the reason I'm on this earth is gone. Right. Yeah. And I think about that so much. And I think about my children too. And like them missing out on that relationship with their grandfather and um, it's just, yeah, I don't think losing my, I can't think of anything positive that came from yeah. losing my dad. The only thing that came from that was that, um, I could, there was a huge weight on my shoulders knowing that I was in Toronto. He was in Montreal. I couldn't do anything. I always felt worried. I always felt guilty that I wasn't there more. So it was almost just like, and I know that people struggle with this a lot is, you know, the relief of the, the, that the burden has been lifted. And I use the word burden loosely because it's not, yeah. you know, it wasn't like right. you were like, oh, you know, whatever, he's yeah. such a burden, but yeah. it is a burden, the worry, the guilt, the, you know, nothing I can do, but you know, it's a lot. And so yeah. I think with, um, even in, in, my situation, which was sudden and, you know, not expected and all of those things, um, you know, I struggled with that too, because it was more of just like, of course I would never ask for it, or I would never have left because of it, you know, mm -hmm. like from a mental health burden perspective. Um, but there is like that conflicting emotion of like, you know, you're devastated and you're sad. And of course you would never want it to be th this way, yeah. but it's the acceptance that, okay, it is this way. I can't change it. So, mm -hmm. you know, looking in, yeah, there is mm -hmm. some, you know, it's, it's not immediate, but, um, you know, down the road, you're just sort of like, okay, they are not suffering anymore, whether that's physically, yeah. mentally, emotionally, like whatever. Yeah. And that does give the the family or the people who are immediately, like who are impacted directly yeah. a sense of relief. It's like, okay, now I just have my shit to worry about, <laughs> which yeah. is enough on a daily yeah. basis. I don't have to worry about or feel guilty about or like helpless yeah. around, like, you know, there's nothing I can do. And so yeah. I get that. So I would love to just, um, turn things around because you and I have talked a lot about this. You like, again, we bonded over the woo. We talk about like you and I are incredibly 
silly and we have like this amazing just relationship in the light stuff and in the fun stuff and mm-hmm. all of that. But we also have that ability to go deep and we, you know, you've been to mediums, I've been to mediums and we just can go there. So um, without going into too much detail, I know that we've had conversations about you feeling their presence around you. So mm-hmm. do you want to just give like a one story about each of like how you felt their presence around you? Um, my Nana is, I used to feel her presence around me even when she was like, this is going to, okay, this is going to sound weird. When she was alive, mm-hmm. I could be in a busy mall walking around and say out of nowhere, be like, I feel like my Nana's here. Mm-hmm. And like, sure enough, I would hear her little whistle that she would have for me. And this is like, do do like this little, like mm-hmm. all, and I would turn around and she'd be there. Wow. Like I, I could be in my house, in my bedroom, knowing that the family's coming over for Friday night dinner. And I could just feel when she walked in the house. Mm-hmm. So there was a real, like the connection was legit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after she passed away, um, oftentimes, well, I stopped wearing her perfume eventually, but sometimes I will walk into my closet and I will just, I'll stop. Like, just like, I just freeze because I walk in and her smell is there. Mm-hmm. I don't own the perfume anymore. I don't have the perfume. The bottle is gone. And I just smell her. And I just like, will stop and be like, hi, Nan. Like, I just, I know that I know that she's there. And sometimes I feel like how ridiculous that I'm just like, like, is she really here? I sometimes second guess myself, but I also know at this point that like, yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think I've told you how, um, she would often come through in like plant life, like Mm -hmm. in like shrubbery or greenery or something. My Nana had a green thumb. Mm-hmm. She was like amazing at caring for plants. I definitely did not inherit that for, from her. Mm-hmm. Um, she gave my mother a banana tree. Like it's a kind of plant, but it doesn't grow bananas. It's just called a banana plant or banana tree. Much like a money tree. Does Correct. not grow money, but Correct. there is something called a money tree. Yes. I know. Yeah. It doesn't grow money. I tried. I've tried. Um, <laughs> Yeah. doesn't happen. Um, but she gave it to my mom when my brother was born 1984 and she, my Nana passed away a couple of months shy of, I believe my brother's 18th or 19th birthday, I think 18th birthday. <clears throat> and, um, we had the banana tree, like all those years it had at this point reached the ceiling and was starting to like curve over because it had nowhere else to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, banana plants are not known to produce flowers. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, just before my brother turned 18, um, my mom was sitting in the room where the banana plant was, and she was talking to my Nana, you know, like, mom, I miss you. Just Mm -hmm. like, you know, voicing out loud, like, where are you writing in her journal? My mom comes flying into my bedroom, crying hysterically. I'm like, mommy, like what's going on? I was scared. I didn't know. She's like, come with me, come with me. She brings me downstairs. She points to the banana plant. There is a branch coming out of it with 18 white flowers on it. Get out. Oh my God. Full body chills happening. 18 white flowers. I kid you not. At first I didn't understand what she was showing me. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, mom, she's like, have you ever seen this? on this tree. And I was like, no, she called the botanist or florist or whoever. I I don't know. I'm just sitting back. Yep. Work (laughs) it out. Work it out. The people that deal with greenery in the nursery, the nursery, (laughs) the The shrubbery people. Yes. Is this the shrubbery company? Um, she called them the next day to ask if this is normal she took a picture of it and sent it to them. And they said, this is like, this is not supposed to happen. 
Wow. And it was just amazing. And it hadn't been there before. Like my mom was in that room every day and out of nowhere, this happened. Like, so that I happened that. a couple of other instances with like my Nana's friends, the morning of her funeral, like the flower popped out of the plant. It was very crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of the, that's, those are a couple of the situations with my Nana, mostly for me, it's like her, just her smell. And there's just this feeling I get, I can't really. Yeah. And do you find really- that it, it, it brings you comfort or is it hard or like what, it, how do you feel when you experience those things? I, for those moments, I feel full. Like I yeah. feel like in those moments, the dreams about my Nana are very hard. I'm often like, I'll have dreams about her where I'm like trying to reach out to her and I can't touch her and she's still far away. Mm -hmm. Um, Or I'll have dreams about her where she's fully with me. And I'm often, I often wake up very like that feeling. I have that feeling for the whole day. Like I've been with her. Yeah. Just this feeling that like for that, moment in time, like the void feels fuller, but also feels like I'm experiencing the loss again. Yeah, for sure. I so it's that. like this little, like, yeah, it feels fuller, but then it's also like, oh, but, yes, it's a tease. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. With my dad, um, with my dad, it's been, it's been much different. Um, um, I've had a couple of experiences with, I don't know. Like I, do you want me to like go full into like the stories? Well, um, you can, or, um, like, give me one, give me one that I don't know, or I don't want to okay. censor. You so you don't want to censor. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the, one of the biggest ones. So as you mentioned before, like we both, you and I have both gone to mediums and, um, my experiences with the mediums have been wonderful because I've had different messages from my dad, different messages from my Nana that have all like been like, I guess you can't walk away and not believe after these experiences. They say that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like some, there's some things that are like, like, yeah, okay. Well, anyone could have said that or, you know what I mean? But then there's, I've always walked away with like, Oh my God, how yeah. it's unequivocally yeah. like, like there's no way yes. anyone could have right. known, known that. that. Yeah. Um, but the last one that I had with the, this particular medium that I'd gone to twice, um, it felt like a, like a 40 minute conversation with my father. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he said there's so many things, but the one thing that like I is sort of sticks with me, um, was that he said, check the black jacket. And I was Mm -hmm. like, the medium said, well, does that mean anything to you? And I was like, I have no idea. Like I, do I have a black jacket? Yes. Have I checked it? I will when I get home, but like, you know, and I, and I didn't know what that meant. He was like, well, you know, sometimes these things don't make sense now, but they'll make sense later. Fine. So I went home, ripped all my (laughs) coat closets apart, went through my husband's black jackets, my kids' black jackets, my black jackets. We have a lot of black jackets. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe I found some dimes, some like. But which is also a thing, by the way, like finding dimes in particular. I know. Or like a thing about like people People who have passed on, like that's sort of a, so that. Yes, I know that's not the main event that you're talking about, right. but it still right. was kind of like, oh, okay, dimes. Yeah, okay, so dimes. I actually like embarrassingly found a little cardboard thing from McDonald's French fries. Let's just get about it's, that. There's no shame here. No body shame. Literally trying to hide something. Um, but I didn't find anything of note. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, eh, okay, fine. Wah, wah. Uh, about a year later, wah, wah, about a year later, I was standing in my staff room at school and I was wearing a black, I wouldn't call it a jacket, but it was, I guess it was like one of those like sweat jackets. Okay. okay? Not like a hoodie, but it was longer. It's like fa- a little nicer than your typical like zip up sweat thing anyway, and heavier. So I was just wearing that and I'd even worn it in the past year, but I'd never looked in the pockets. Cause I didn't remember ever using the pockets. They're too low down. 
Mm -hmm. So I was standing in the staff room, just like playing with the zipper, like um, unzipping it, zipping it back up. And then I like put my hand in the pocket and I pulled out this. Okay. Well, I'm a child. We all know that. And I buy little fidget toys and little stuffed animals and whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had bought this one little like cutesy thing that smelled like mint chip, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Well, that unto itself reminds me of my dad because originally or because it's been sitting in your pocket for a year. <laughs> I didn't have ice cream in my pocket. I just want to clarify it for the, for the listeners. Fur, but mint and did you get the McDonald's for the prize? <laughs> okay. Okay. These might be so, questions and I just want to be the okay. voice to a- a- ask these questions that people might be wondering. Okay. We carry don't on. Want, we don't want the listener to have any unanswered questions. No, we don't. Um, no, I had bought this stupid thing at Walmart and it was like, I get curious about these things when there's like a surprise inside. I'm like, I just need to buy one and no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whatever. Yes. And then I opened this one and it was this cute little like beanie animal shark thing that smelled like mint chocolate chip ice cream mint chocolate chip ice cream is what my dad and i that was like that was our ice cream like that, that mm-hmm. was our robin's thing it's the best yeah so it reminded me of him mm-hmm. so i was like oh, oh mint chip oh so nice and i would carry it with me and i just like would be in my classroom fidgeting with it teaching holding it in my hand it just was like a thing to hold on to yeah. and i lost it and mm-hmm. i obsessed over losing it because i hate losing anything mm-hmm. And I guess that was prior to the thing with the medium. And I guess my dad in his presence knew that I was upset about having lost this thing and told me to check the black jacket. Wow. So when I pulled this thing out of the black jacket, I stood in my staff room and literally was like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. And my work friends, that was my first year working there. So I had to be, I didn't want to get too woo-woo on them because yeah. I'd like to- I don't know you enough. Yeah. I like to make friends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> They're- you don't want to isolate yourself right. immediately. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I said to him, I'm like, oh my God, I just found something that I lost like, like a year and a half ago. That my dead father told me about through a medium. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Yeah. too much did I share too much <laughs> like I swear I'm I swear I want to be friends with you please don't include me. um yeah. no but since that day that I found that I was like check the black jacket oh my god now I carry that thing with me everywhere it's now like my like it's like, like your this, anchor to your it's like yeah yeah it's, and yeah. it's this feeling that like oh my god like my it's just this proof for me that mm-hmm. like you know, so now it's small enough. It's just like when I switch purses, I just throw it into the next purse. I do not go anywhere without this thing. Oh my God. I didn't know that you took it everywhere. Next time I see you, I want to see it. I well, I asked smell you, it I, <laughs> in a weird way. You don't want to smell it because okay. no, it, I don't believe, I think it needs a little bit of like a washing. I showed it to oh. someone the other day. I Say showed no it to more. Them. I showed it to a common friend of ours the other day at lunch and she just looked at it and was just like, that looks really dirty. I think he needs a wash. And I was just like, yeah, but then she's like, no, Jamie, I think it needs a wash. I was so, like, but don't you, do you feel a little bit like if you wash it, you're washing away the power <laughs> of it, like the magical like connection. Now it's just like a, a, a ratty old like thing that is like questionable why you are carrying it with you. Like, does yeah. it, does it wash away the mystique? A little bit. I don't. I don't really want to wash it. I don't. It's not dirty. Like I haven't dropped it on the ground, or like I don't take it to the bathroom with me. You know what I mean? It's not like it has fecal matter on it. It's just well, like I. I, I don't, so you me, haven't had it tested. That's very true. Why that's don't you just like spray spray it with some essential oils and well, kind of do that? It actually was in my little zipper thing with my essential oils for a while, so it kind of has like a hint of the essential oils. Okay. In it, so it's like, I listen. I'm I fine. I leave that to you. I I feel like you'll make the right decision. I'm fine. 
I'm fine with it. Well, I love those stories. Those are like, I mean, I am like such a believer. I still believe that like magic is real. Like when I go Mm -hmm. to a magic show, even if it's like a five-year-old doing a trick to me, I'm like, yeah, no, I get that. I don't know how you did that, but I believe in it. So I am like the easiest person to convince, but I agree. Like I think when people go to mediums or like have these experiences themselves, it's, it's how do you, how do you remain skeptical? I get it. The skepticism on first at first glance, I get that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think it's again, I, and I've talked about this. I've done episodes about it where (laughs) it has made me feel so connected and um, comforted. And it's truly, I think, been a key component to my healing and being able to move forward. So I love that. Um, so I, I want to wrap up shortly in, but I do want to just ask you, cause we kind of laughed about it, but do you find that your friends and family or not like you obviously have me as like someone yeah. who is like, you know, you're preaching to the choir, but like, do P are you the weird one? Like, are, do people think you're like, Oh, there's Jamie again. And like, she's nuts. Or do they listen to this and humor you? Or do they also, are, are they like intrigued by it? Um, it's very hard for anyone to deny. Like once I tell them the things it's like, my mom is a skeptic. Okay. Mm-hmm. My mom, even after like, the flowers. Yes. But, but like when I go to a medium, I think she, she believes in these little signs and stuff, but mm-hmm. she doesn't necessarily believe that like my Nana's here, you know? Yeah. But when I call her and I tell her the things from the mediums or whatever, she'll be like, Oh my gosh. You know, like she'll, she's sort of like, you know how someone would say like, you're cautiously optimistic, mm-hmm. kind of like s- skeptically amazed. I got that. I, would, like I skeptic- would trademark that immediately. Skeptically amazed. Yeah. Did I just, yeah. Um, I don't know but if you I made that think, up, but it sounds good. I, I think I did, but I wouldn't know. Um, But I think <laughs> I'm, I, I don't, most people just, I think can accept that like, this is the way I am. Like I've always been very much like when I have a dream about my dad or my Nana, I'm just like, they came to visit me last night, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Like, I know I've talked to you about like my dad's connection with William Mm -hmm. and stuff, which we like didn't even get to, but I think that that is one of your sons, your twin, one of your boys. Yes. And I think children are very unjaded in this world. Mm -hmm. Um, So they can feel certain things. And so when I tell people things that my son has said about my dad, when like he was two and a half when my dad passed away, he only met him like three times in his life and spent a very short period of time with him. Yeah. The things that my son has said to me and then that the medium has confirmed without me even doing anything. It's just like, oh, like how can anyone deny deny me? Yeah. Yep. You know, they may not believe or they may not have had said experience, but I think some people feel like they just don't want to go there. I think that's exactly it because I think, um, for some people, it can feel too hard to open up that wound again. There goes my microphone. Or to, maybe that was a sign that we should stop. <laughs> um, or it's, you know, they're just scared of what they're going to hear because they're not ready to face it. Like, I think there's some deeper things there and not, it's not in a bad way. Like, it's not a judgy thing. It's just like, I think you and I are very open to doing the work, even if it's painful and to going there and to, we're just open to a lot of different things where I think many people aren't. And yeah. So did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I also think that like, I think like my mom, for example, I keep telling her like, oh, you should go like, you know, maybe you'll speak to Nana and like, you know, we've, we also lost my, my papa, like my, my mom's dad. And 
my mom's just like, I'm just, I don't know how I feel. I feel like it would be too upsetting or right. People whatever. don't want to feel pain. Like they don't right. want to get uncomfortable. And I get that, but, but like, that is the way th- through. I think that's what I think too. And I like, I had my dad say things to me, like in these medium things that, you know, about how, how he felt dying, like that yeah. moment I was watching it mm-hmm. and he was telling me, like, he was apologizing to me about having to see it and yeah. tell me it saying to me that it was scary and saying certain things that it was like the word, like he, it was awful and he was trapped and this yeah. whole thing that was very upsetting to hear. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was, those were things that I thought about and worried about anyway. Right. And now you have so, confirmation. And right. I think again, I, you and I are different that way where we feel that information is power, even if it's going to be what you don't want to hear, but mm-hmm. you and I, because we're both anxious thinkers, we're going to create a story around it anyway. Exactly. So give me the facts so I don't have to, I can shut it down in my brain and just be like, okay, now I know, or I feel really sure about what I strongly believed. And now I can be like, okay, now I just have to deal with what's in front of me, not the story that I create around it, which is going to be nine times out of 10, a lot worse than the facts. I think, you know, like I'm going to create something far worse than the reality. Mm -hmm. And I can, we can deal with reality. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be easy. It's not always going to be pretty, but I think it's a lot healthier to sit in the mud with what you know to be true Mm -hmm. than to just spiral into something that really just never ends. So I think that's what it is for us is that we're going to go there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well just put us out yeah. of our misery and just tell us the truth or how but it really is. Do you ever feel, do you ever feel like you, like I, I need to believe a hundred percent. Like I, I need to know that, that it, it helps with my own grief Mm-hmm. to be like, they're still here with me. Yeah. That like they, you know, like if, if, if it was just this like finality and it's yes, their time on earth is there's, there's an end to it. But if I had to just be okay with that and just, it makes me feel better that like it was a, a physical goodbye, but an emo- the emotional connection is still there and yep. to know that I'm going to get those little hints and those little visits and, and that you're still like that. being guided and you're still being protected. Like I just look at it as now we just have guardian angels that we know who are keeping us safe and protected from above. And I, you know, I'm all for like, just let's get it from everywhere because let's face it. A lot of the people on earth suck. (laughs) So let's get it from like above and like, yeah, no, I I'm with you. Like I feel comforted by it. I really do. So hopefully others who are listening to this, um, you know, I think what you've shared and thank you for being so honest and real and vulnerable. And, um, you know, I think people will just get a lot from hearing your story and, and yeah, I hope so. Anyway, I think it was great. And I love you to bits and pieces. And I I just love everything about you. And you're truly, truly one of my favorite people ever. And um, yeah. Anything else you want to share or add or, you know, I just hope that people, um, people know that their, their people are watching out for them. Yeah you know, it's a, it's a, it's a comfort. And, um, and I'm happy that you're doing this for you as well, because I think it's, I think it's amazing. And I think that, that, you know, watching you and how you've dealt with your grief and your, you know, the hand that you've been dealt has just been, you know, 
very inspiring to a lot of people, including the people that love you the most because we, everyone worried about you the most. So, yeah. you know, it's just been, you know, I just love you to bits. So I'm happy you're doing this. Thanks, babe. It may not be the original podcast idea that we had no, discussed. No, yes, but- we had discussed a podcast idea. It's not off the table. It's just highly inappropriate. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like I need <laughs> to get- This is better for you. This well, is- I feel like I need to establish this side first. So then, you know, if people think that I have something important to say when you and I create our podcast and realize <laughs> I really don't, <laughs> um, you know- I just felt like this was a good place to start, but it's not off the table. Even if it's just for you and me, I'm all for it. <laughs> when we get to the old age home, my friend. Okay. So next week we'll start it. Cause yeah. Anyway, um, right. <laughs> we've taken up too much time of, you know, mine. Um, but anyway, I love you so much. Thank you so much love for doing babe. this. And um, yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. We'll talk soon. Off the record. Off the record. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for listening to this So That Just Happened podcast. I really hope you found value in this episode and that you're walking away with at least one golden nugget that you can implement or feel inspired by. I would be so grateful if you would share it with one friend or family member who is committed to moving forward and transforming their life. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch every new episode and please leave me a review. It would mean so much to me. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at @coachcarly. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.